Hey you guys and welcome back. Today I'm doing something a little bit different on my channel. This is going to be a new series that I'm starting now and I'm planning to do a video like this at the end of every quarter, April and in July and in October and then at the end of the year. And this is going to be my Pandemonium series and basically it is a rundown of all of the products that I've hit pan on, which is such a satisfying feeling. Like hitting pan on a product just makes me so excited because then it means that I really truly use it a lot and I really Really do enjoy it. It's just very exciting to hit pan on a product. What I also wanted to do is share with you guys not only the products that I've hit pan on, but also products that I want to hit pan on. I thought that would be cool to kind of do that and then I can like see if I actually did hit pan on it. I don't know. I hope you guys like this series. I know there's a bunch of videos out with Project Pan. I actually haven't watched any of them, so I don't really know if this, what I'm doing now, is the exact same thing as those Project Pan videos, but I thought I would just make like my own kind of series out of it. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's go ahead and get started. I think what I wanna do is go through the products that I hit pan on first and kind of go from earliest pan to newest pan. First one I wanna talk about is the Rimmel Stay Match Translucent Powder. Pretty sure this was the first product that I hit pan on. This is just a translucent powder that makes your skin more matte and I love to apply this in my t-zone area because it really prevents oils from seeping through. It's just a classic from the drugstore. If you're someone who gets oily in your t-zone or even if you just want to set your entire face with a mattifying powder, I would totally recommend this. I think it works really, really well. This lives in my travel makeup bag if you guys want to see like my overnight makeup bag the video on all the products i keep in my overnight makeup bag let me know because i can definitely do that i was thinking about doing it but this lives in my travel makeup bag i use it all the time i sleep over at my parents house or if we go to our cottage for the weekend like this is the powder that i bring with i know mine is pretty old that's the thing about these products they're all kind of like old and i feel like they're past their expiry dates but so next up is another Rimmel product. There's a lot of Rimmel products in this video, but this is the Rimmel Natural Bronzer. This is their waterproof bronzer, and I have mine in the shade Sun Bronze. This was like the first bronzer that I ever purchased, which is obviously why, well, second bronzer that I ever purchased, but I've had it for a really long time, which is obviously why I hit pan on it. It is a very warm bronzer, but it's really nice. Kind of looks like I've hit hard pan on this, so I don't know how much longer I'm gonna keep this. I do wanna use up more of it. I think I'm going to toss it into an everyday makeup bag or something just so I can use as much of it as possible before tossing it. Next product is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contouring Palette. Do you guys remember this? I used to use this in my videos all the time. This is in the shade Dulce de Leche. Are you guys like sensing a theme with the products that I hit pan on? Powders and bronzers. This is one of the nicest, like softest powder formulas I've ever felt. It's just so smooth and so blendable. It's such a pleasure to put on. It blends so effortlessly. This isn't actually that old. I don't think I've had it for that long. So I'm going to definitely be keeping this longer than like the bronzer that I showed you. Then I have this, which is the L'Oreal Infallible Total Cover Concealing and Contouring Kit. The cream products count? That's a question I have to ask because obviously you go through cream, cream products like concealers and stuff faster than like powder products, but I'm just gonna include this anyway because I did hit pan on these three shades. This is a really good palette for spot concealing. If you don't wanna wear foundation that day, you can just apply like, I don't know, any of these shades here, depending on your skin tone, and you can apply that on the blemish and it will basically completely hide it. I think once I finish this, I'm not gonna repurchase it because I found another concealing palette that's cheaper and that I like more, but this was really good while I had it, so I'm gonna use it up until it is gone and then I will toss it. Then surprisingly enough, this is one of the, well, this is the most recent product that I purchased, but I actually hit pan on it really fast. And I don't know if that's because it's just a thinner powder formula that you run through faster or if they have less product. I don't really know. It is very soft. So that could be why you run through it fast. This is the Rimmel Insta Fix and, Ma Fix and Matte Translucent Powder. And it's actually a really similar formula to the Wet n Wild contour palette that I showed you. Like it's the same soft consistency. I do think that's related to hitting pan. Like if the powder is super soft, you're more likely to get a lot of kickback and you're more likely to run out of the product sooner. But this is a really nice translucent powder. It really mattifies my skin. It's so soft to the touch. I do think it is in some ways better than this one. 
It's just a softer formula. This one's just a little bit more rough in my opinion. And I also like the packaging of this one more because the lid is attached. So I think once I run out of this guy, I'm pretty much just going to repurchase this one. Next up, I have the e.l.f. Contouring Palette. This is an oldie but a goodie, and I've hit pan only on one of the shades. I've hit pan on this bronzer shade because obviously when I'm applying these products, I apply the most bronzer. This is again a really nice formula. I love the convenience of having four shades in one palette. I really wish e.l.f. would sell these little pans separately. I want to like replace this bronzer once I run out and I don't want to have to buy a whole new palette. It's kind of dumb to have to buy a whole new palette so I hope that they start releasing these as singles. If you are looking for a good contouring palette this is the way to go. It's really really good. And last, so last I have the e.l.f. Contouring Blush and Bronzing Palette. This is in the shade Fiji. It's their matte version and it doesn't look like I've hit pan but I have like that little little speck there in the bronzer that's where I've hit pan and once you hit pan it doesn't take very long for that pan to spread so this is another product that lives in my travel makeup bag I think it's really convenient because it has the bronzer and the blush in one and I like both of the shades on me the only downside to this formula is that for some reason the bronzer gets like hard pan on me so I kind of have to scrape off like the hard like chunks on it quite often which is probably why I hit pan on it so fast. For some reason, it's very prone to hard pan. So I think for that reason, I'm, I wouldn't repurchase this. I do think it is a really good formula. I just get so irritated by that hard pan-ness that keeps happening. So the next portion of this video is, like I said in the intro, going to be focused on products that I want to hit pan on in the next year, next quarter, next month, I don't really know. I'm really excited to see if I actually do. I'm gonna like keep these products on my desk so that I remember to use them and try and use them up. So yeah, here are the products that I really want to hit pan on. The first is, this is the Fit Me Set and Smooth Normal to Dry Powder for Maybelline and it's in the shade 120 Classic Ivory. I really like this powder for under eyes. It's obviously too light for me to use on my entire face, but to set my under eyes, this is such a nice formula. It's got little, little, little glimmers in it. It's not sparkly by any means, but there's a little bit of a sheen to it, which looks really nice. It really brightens my under eyes. The reason I want to hit pan on this is because I have had it for quite a long time, and I feel like it's almost time to let it go because it's been that long. Keep this one in my like everyday makeup drawer because I have to remember to use it and try and use it up. I feel like I've made a dent in here. That's promising. I also want to hit pan on this concealer palette. This is the concealing kit that I told you I like more than the L'Oreal one. Like this is the one I will repurchase when I run out. It's from Rimmel. It's their Insta Conceal and Contour Kit in the shade Light. It has a really nice formula. It has really, really good coverage. This stays in my travel makeup bag because when I go to my parents' house, I don't like wearing foundation and a full face of makeup. So I'll just spot conceal with this little guy. And I think it's really, really handy. It's really small and compact. I'm hoping I'll hit pan on at least one of these two shades here because they're the ones I use the most often. I think I can do it though because like I said, cream seem to run out faster than powders. It's kind of embarrassing that like, this product is so old. I don't even think they sell it anymore. It's the NYC Sun and Bronze bronzing palette. It's in the shade Montauk Bronze. Like I'm almost 100% sure this was discontinued and you can't buy it anymore. So I want to hit pan on it before I dispose of it. And I really do like this bronzer. I think it has a really nice reddish undertone that's kind of hard to find. It looks really good on tan skin. I have definitely made a dent in there. So I think it's possible this summer, by the end of this summer, I, I will have hit pan on it if I use it consistently. I hope I do because it is definitely old and I don't think I should be using it on my face for much longer. So I also want to hit pan on this product. This is from e.l.f. It's from their Aqua Beauty line. Did e.l.f. rename their Aqua Beauty line because I have some of their like Aqua Beauty cushion eyeshadows and I was on their website the other day and I'm pretty sure they renamed it to like Velvet Cushion. I don't know, did they rename it? Let me know. When I bought this, this was from their Aqua Beauty line. It's their blush and bronzer in the shade Bronzed Peach. This is such a nice formula. It's like a hybrid between a cream and a powder. It's so fresh looking. It's got like this like nice dewiness to it. It's perfect for the spring and the summer. I've done some damage to this bronzer. Like it looks like I've indented it quite a bit. So I'm fairly confident I can 
increase that indent this summer and this spring, I will definitely be reaching for it and I will update you guys if I hit pan on it. The last two items are like very unlikely that I will hit pan on them just given the nature of what they are. I didn't include any eyeshadows in this video because I have so many eyeshadows and I don't think I'm gonna hit pan on any of them. Like I will definitely include them in the next video if I do, but I don't think I will because I kind of switch up my eyeshadows a lot and I never use one palette enough to hit pan on it, if you know what I mean. These next two products are also, I think, quite unlikely that I'll hit pan on them, but I want to include them because I think it's a good goal. The first one is the Essence Silky Touch Blush in the, in the shade Autumn Peach. Now, I think they discontinued this, am I right? They don't make these Silky Touch blushes anymore. I really like the formula of the Silky Touch blushes. I have three of the shades and they're so, like they're so pretty on your skin. They have this beautiful natural sheen and natural glow to them that just looks stunning in the spring and in the summer. Out of all the shades I have, I think Autumn Peach is my favorite. It looks really fresh. It looks really nice on your skin. I know blushes are extremely hard to hit pan on because you just don't apply enough of it to hit pan on it, but I hope I do with this blush because I think these are actually quite old, so I don't know how much longer I can have them before like they're not safe to apply. So I'm including it in this video to remind myself that I should be using this more so that I can hit pan on it and get the most out of it. And the last product is definitely something that I probably won't hit pan on, but I wanted to include it anyways, and it's the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. The reason I would like to hit pan on this is because I use it almost every day. This is my go-to highlighter. It's the one that I reach for the most often, and the reason I don't think I will hit pan on it is because I don't apply very much highlighter. And also it has like this domed shape. Dome shapes are really hard to crack because they are so fat. But I thought I would include it just to let you guys know that this is a product that I use very, very often. And if it wasn't a dome shape, I'm sure I would hit pan on it sooner rather than later. So that sums up this video. My battery lights are blinking. So I'm just gonna wrap this up really fast. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it interesting or helpful. If you have any products that you hit pan on, let me know down below or like types of products like do you hit pan on blushes? Do you hit pan on bronzers? Like what do you hit pan on? Let me know. I'd be very interested in hearing what you guys have used up. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you would like to see more videos and I will see you in my next one. Bye.